So today we're going to move beyond the additive model and add an interaction. So we're no longer assuming that each group has the same slope. Now, remember back to our example about support for the Iraq war, maybe in this case, right, we think that the effect of party ID on support is the same by age. What do we do? Well, we can just use our additive model, right? That's what we were doing before. We were assuming that the effect of party ID on support would not vary by age. And so we construct our fitted line with beta naught plus our covariate for party ID plus a dummy variable for age and as well as our error term, right? Now let's allow the effect of party ID on support to differ by age. What do we have to do now? In other words, we want the relationship between one variable, in this case party ID, and the outcome support for the war vary depending on this third variable in our case, the dummy variable for young and old age. Now, it might seem strange to try to do this at first, right? With regressions, we're typically interested in understanding how one explanatory variable affects some outcome that we're interested in. Now, why would we be interested in how explanatory variables relate to each other? And the reason that we're going to do that is by looking at the interaction between age and party ID in our example, we'll be able to tell whether or not a change in one of them alters the ability of the other one to explain the outcome. So you may imagine that for younger individuals who haven't had time to vote <clears throat> and have an association with a party, that association between their partisanship and their support for the war may not be as strong for older individuals who have had a lifetime of voting and being engaged in politics. That might really have quite a large effect on their willingness to support the war. And what's nice with dummy variables and interactions is mathematically adding this is not very tricky. We're just going to make a new variable that's multiplying our two dummy variables, x1 and x2, by each other. And then we're going to calculate the regression coefficient as normal with just a third estimated beta for the joint interactive relationship between x1 and x2. Now, although this isn't going to actually change the construction very much of our regression model, it is very much going to change the way in which we can interpret our coefficients as well as the outcomes. We need to be very careful in our language and the way that we make inferences from the estimated coefficients now. So you can see that we're just going to construct a slightly more complicated model by adding in that third estimated coefficient where, again, we have our beta naught, our first beta in this case, the estimated relationship between party ID and our outcome will include our dummy variable, in this case age, and then we'll have our third estimated coefficient, which is the interaction between x1 and x2. So if we were to construct the fitted line for our baseline category in which age is between 18 to 53, we would have our beta naught plus the first term, right, with regard to party ID. And we would not include any of the subsequent terms because, again, they would cancel out because D equals zero for the baseline category. Then for individuals who are above 53, we could get the predicted or mean value of Y conditional on age by having the entire fitted line, right? We'd have our beta naught. We'd also have beta one times X one, whatever their party ID is. We'd also have beta two times one since they're in the upper category. And then we'd also have our third beta times X one, whatever their party ID is, as well as the dummy variable. So essentially what's happening here with that last term, the interaction term, that's allowing for two separate regression lines to be estimated with slopes that are different for each of the groups. Whereas in the previous module, we were estimating two separate regression lines for the age groups, but we we're assuming that they had the same slope. 